Zongkapa Lobsang Zaba, or Songkapa, the man from Songka, 1357-1419, usually taken to mean, the man from Onion Valley. Born in Amdu, was a famous teacher of Tibetan Buddhism whose activities led to the formation of the Gelug school of Tibetan Buddhism. He is also known by his ordained name Lhasang Drakpa Wiley, Blow Bazang Grags Pa or simply as Jirin Pochi Wiley, Rjerin Poche. He was the son of a Tibetan Longbin tribal leader who also once served as an official of the Yuan dynasty of China. In his two main treatises, the Lamrim Chenmo Wiley, Lam Rim Chen Mo, and Nakram Chenmo Wiley, Snags Rim Chen Mo, Tsongkhapa meticulously sets forth this graduated way and how one establishes oneself in the paths of Sutra and Tantra. Biography <inaudible> 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 Early years With a Mongolian father and a Tibetan mother, Tsongkhapa was born into a nomadic family in the walled city of Tsongkha in Amdu, Tibet present-day Haidong and Xining, Qinghai in 1357. It is said that the Buddha Sakyamuni spoke of his coming as an emanation of the Bodhisattva Manjushri in the short verse from the root tantra of Manjushri Wiley, Jam D. Pal after I pass Awayand my pure doctrine is absent. You will appear as an ordinary being, performing the deeds of a Buddha, and establishing the joyful land, the great protector, in the land of the snows. According to hagiographic accounts, Tsongkhapa's birth was prophesied by the twelfth abbot of the Snarthang Monastery, and was recognized as such at a young age, taking the lay vows at the age of three before Rolp Dorje, fourth Karmapa Lama and was named Kunga Nyingpo Wiley, Kun Dga Snyingpo. At the age of seven, he was ordained as a Shramanera by Dondrup Rinchen Wiley, Don Grub Rin Chen, 1309-1385, the first abbot of Jacking Monastery Wiley, Bya Kyung Brag, and was given the ordination name Lhasang Drakpa Wiley, Blow Bizang Grags Pa. Topic. Monastic career It was at this early age that he was able to receive the empowerments of Haruka, Hevajra, and Yamantaka, three of the most prominent wrathful deities of Tibetan Buddhism, as well as being able to recite a great many sutras, not the least of which was Manyusrinamasamgiti. He would go on to be a great student of the Vinaya, the doctrine of behavior, and even later of the six yogas of Naropa, the Kalachakra Tantra, and the practice of Mahamudra. At the age of 24, he received full ordination as a monk of the Sakya school. From Janu Lodro Wiley, G -Z -H -O -N -N -Blow -Gross, and Rendawa Wiley, Red Mda Pa, he received the lineage of the Pramanavartika transmitted by Sakya Pandita. He mastered all the courses of study at Drigang Kagyud Monastery in Yusang. As an emanation of Manjusri, Tsongkhapa is said to have been of one mind with Atisa, received the Kadam lineages and studied the major Sarma tantras under Sakya and Kagyu masters. He also studied with a Nyingma teacher, the Siddha Lek Gi Dorje Wiley, Legs Gi Rdorje, and the abbot of Shalu Monastery, Cho Ki Pel Wiley, Zhwa Lus Pa Chos Ki Di Pal, and his main Zogchen master was Drupchen Lek Ki Dorje Wiley, Grub Chen Las Ki Rdoja, also known as Namka Gyaltsen Wiley, Nam Mkha, or Jil M T Shan, 1326-1401. In addition to his studies, he engaged in extensive meditation retreats. Streets. He is reputed to have performed millions of prostrations, mandala offerings and other forms of purification practice. Tsongkhapa often had visions of Istadavadas, especially of Manjusri, with whom he would communicate directly to clarify difficult points of the scriptures. Honours <laughs> 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 Tsongkhapa was one of the foremost authorities of Tibetan Buddhism at the time. He composed a devotional prayer called the Miktsima prayer to his Sakya master Rendawa, which was offered back to Tsongkhapa, with the note of his master saying that these verses were more applicable to Tsongkhapa than to himself. <laughs> Death Tsongkhapa died in 1419 at the age of 62. After his death several biographies were written by lamas of different traditions. Wangchik Dorje, 9th Karmapa Lama, praised Tsongkhapa as one who swept away wrong views with the correct and perfect ones. 
Mikio Dorje, 8th Karmapa Lama, wrote in his poem in praise of the incomparable song Kappa. Topic. Philosophy and practice Topic. Background Tsongkhapa was acquainted with all Tibetan Buddhist traditions of his time, and received lineages transmitted in the major schools. His main source of inspiration was the Kadam school, the legacy of Atisa. Tsongkhapa received two of the three main Kadampa lineages the Lam Rim lineage, and the Oral Guideline lineage from the Nyingma Lama, Lodrag Namka Giltsen, and the third main Kadampa lineage the lineage of textual transmission from the Kagyu teacher Lama Umapa. Tsongkhapa's teachings drew upon these Kadampa teachings of Atisa, emphasizing the study of Vinaya, the Tripitaka, and the Shastras. Atisa's Lamrim inspired Tsongkhapa's Lamrim Chenmo, which became a main text among his followers. He also practiced and taught extensively the Vajrayana, and especially how to bring the Sutra and Tantra teachings together, wrote works that summarized the root teachings of the Buddhist philosophical schools, as well as commentaries on the Pratimaksa, Prashnaparamita, Khandrakirti's Madhyamakavatara, Logic, Pure Land and the Sarma Tantras. Topic. Essentials According to Thupten Jinpa, the following elements are essential in a coherent understanding of Tsongkhapa's understanding and interpretation of the Madhyamaka refutation of essentialist ontology. Tsongkhapa's distinction between the domains of the conventional and ultimate perspectives. Tsongkhapa's insistence on a prior, correct conceptual identification of the object of negation. Tsongkhapa's differentiation of the various connotations of the all important term ultimate Paramartha SKT. Tsongkhapa's distinction he draws between that which is not found and that which is negated. Topic. Development Tsongkhapa's first principal work, The Golden Garland of Eloquence Wiley, Legs B. Shad Gser Frang demonstrated a philosophical view in line with the Yogacara school and, as became one of his hallmarks, was more influenced by Indian authors than contemporary Tibetan sources. At this time his account of the Madhyamaka propounds a philosophy that later Gelakpas call Yogacara Svatantrika Madhyamaka yet does not have the authority of Khandrakirti's Prasangika interpretation. After this early work, his attention focused on the Prashnaparamita Sutras and Dharmakirti's Pramanavartika, and it is this emphasis that dominates all his later philosophical works. Garfield suggests his stance as, a complete understanding of Buddhist philosophy requires a synthesis of the epistemology and logic of Dharmakirti with the metaphysics of Nagarjuna. Topic. Philosophy For Tsongkhapa, calming meditation alone is not sufficient, but should be paired to rigorous, exact thinking, to push the mind and precipitate a breakthrough in cognitive fluency and insight. Topic. Prasangika – Rejection of Essentialism Tsongkhapa was a proponent of Khandrakirti's consequentialist or Prasangika interpretation of the Madhyamaka teachings on sunyata emptiness, rejecting the Svatantrika point of view. According to Tsongkhapa, the Prasangika approach is the only acceptable approach within Madhyamaka, rejecting the Svatantrikas because they state that the conventional reality is established by virtue of particular characteristics. Rangi Mt Shan Nyidkyis Grub Pa. The opponents of Khandrakirti's Prasanna Pada are both a, the essentialists, who accept that things ultimately have intrinsic nature, and b, the Svatantrikas, who refute that, but accept that things conventionally have intrinsic character or intrinsic nature. The classification into Prasangika and Svatantrika originated from their different usages of reason to make emptiness understandable. The Svatantrikas strive to make positive assertions to attack wrong views, whereas the Prasangikas draw out the contradictory consequences prasanga of the opposing views. In Tsongkhapa's reading, the difference becomes one of the understanding of emptiness, which centers on the nature of conventional existence. The Svatantrikas state that conventional phenomena have particular characteristics, by which they can be distinguished, but without an ultimately existing essence. 
In Tsongkhapa's understanding, these particular characteristics are posited as establishing that conventionally things do have an intrinsic nature, a position which he rejects. Svatantrikas like are those Madhyamikas who accept that, at a conventional level, things actually do have intrinsic nature just as they are perceived. To exist at all entails having intrinsic existence. However, since there is nothing that holds up under ultimate analysis, everything is ultimately empty. Emptiness is the lack of ultimate existence. Although Tsongkhapa is regarded as the great champion of the Prasangika view, according to Thomas Doctor, Tsongkhapa's views on the difference between Prasangika and Svatantrika are preceded by a 12th century author, Mabja Yongchub Sandru. Tsongkhapa nevertheless argues that the Prasangika's use of reductio ad absurdum is also syllogistic, because one refutes the opponent using a subject, a reason, and so forth that are accepted by that opponent. Topic. Conventional valid cognition While objecting to Bhavavivaka's understanding of a shared object at the conventional level, Tsongkhapa has to leave intact conventional reality and causality, to keep intact the teachings on cyclic existence and the basis for moral behavior. Therefore, he has to explain how conventional reality is perceived in a valid way, which he does by introducing conventional valid cognition. According to Tsongkhapa, following Kandrakirti, all phenomena are empty of inherent existence or essence, because they are dependently co-arisen with created by mental imputation, c. q. the mind. All phenomena in all possible worlds lack inherent existence and come into existence relative to a designating consciousness which co-arises with that phenomena. From the Prasangika perspective, in order for something to exist, it must be designated validly by a designating consciousness. To talk about an object that does not exist in relation to a subject is incoherent. Anything which comes into existence through valid designation is part of conventional reality or conventional truth. According to Lama Tsongkhapa, something is validly designated exists conventionally if it meets all of the following three conditions. It is known to a conventional consciousness. No other conventional cognition within that convention contradicts it from being thus known. Reason that accurately analyzes reality, that is, analyzes whether something intrinsically exists, does not contradict it. Whatever fails to meet those criteria does not exist, and relationships between objects cannot exist without being validly designated into existence. Nevertheless, Prasangika are not stating that nothing exists, but instead, hold that phenomena only come into existence codependently with minds which are applying conceptual and nominal conventions to uncharacterized mere experiences. Things and phenomenon do exist codependently, based upon a relationship with a knowing and designating mind, but nothing exists, including the fundamental characteristics which compose our experience, in an independent, self-arising, or self-sustaining manner. Topic. Identifying the correct object of negation For Tsongkhapa, extended rational analysis is required to correctly establish what it is that is to be negated. This correct establishment is necessary to reach a liberating insight into emptiness, while avoiding the trap of nihilism, the possibility that seeming reality becomes extinct or invalidated if a phenomenon is empty of that very phenomenon. While the I or self is accepted as nominally existing in a conventional way, for Tsongkhapa, following Kandrakirti, the object to be negated by reason is the metaphysical fiction of an intrinsic nature which is erroneously reified. Tsongkhapa argues that there exists within each of us a natural belief, a naive, normal, pre-philosophical way of seeing the world, which leads us to perceive things and events as possessing some kind of intrinsic existence and identity. It is this mistaken perception which is the object to be negated, according to Tsongkhapa, Buddhist in concreto, the Sarvastivada and non-Buddhist essentialist schools are not negating the correct object, but are only negating imaginary constructs and acquired ignorance, not the innate perception of an inherently existing self. They have realized only a coarse selflessness and having thereby suppressed, but not removed from the root, the obstructions to liberation. According to Tsongkhapa, the negation of acquired, philosophical notions won't eradicate the afflictions or free one from cycles of rebirth. 
The negation has to go further, since the object of negation is not an acquired, philosophical notion of a permanent self, but the innate perception of an inherently existing self. Gayum Kensor Rinpoche Lob Sang Jampa, referring to Kaldan Gyatso, notes that, There are actually two objects that must be refuted or destroyed, namely this sense of I and the subjective self, the mind grasping at that false I. By analyzing the sense of I, and its logical contradictions, its seemingly true existence is seen through, which destroys the continuum of the subjective mind grasping it. What continues is a wisdom mind. Topic. Lack of intrinsic nature According to Patrick Jennings, Tsongkhapa describes a procedure for establishing the non-existence of a substantial, abiding essence in either the self or in exterior phenomena, such as pots or potatoes. It is essential during this procedure that one does not confuse the non-findability of a substantial, non-relational self with the refutation of the existence of a relative or conventional self, the self as it appears to ordinary cognition and which is subject to the law of cause and effect. This procedure is described in Chapter 23, The Person Lacks Intrinsic Nature, a Volume 3 of the Lamrim Chenmo, and entails four steps. The refutation of the position that the self is one with the aggregates. The refutation of the position that the self is different from the aggregates. How those arguments also refute each of the remaining positions. How the person appears like an illusion based on that refutation. Topic. Emptiness Tsongkhapa saw emptiness as a consequence of pratityasamutpada dependent arising, the teaching that no dharma thing has an existence of its own, but always comes into existence in dependence on other dharmas. According to Tsongkhapa, dependent arising and emptiness are inseparable. Tsongkhapa's view on ultimate reality is condensed in the short text in praise of dependent arising c. q. In praise of relativity c. q. The essence of eloquency. It states that things do exist conventionally, but ultimately everything is dependently arisen, and therefore void of inherent existence. Whatever depends on causes and conditions is empty of intrinsic reality. What excellent instruction could there be more marvelous than this discovery? This means that conventionally things do exist, and that there is no use in denying that. But it also means that ultimately those things have no existence of their own, and that cognizing them as such results from cognitive operations, not from some unchangeable essence. Tsongkhapa Since objects do not exist through their own nature, they are established as existing through the force of convention. According to Tsongkhapa, emptiness is empty of inherent existence, emptiness only exists nominally and conventionally. Emptiness is co-dependently arisen as a quality of conventional phenomenon and is itself a conventional phenomenon. There is no transcendental ground and ultimate reality has no existence of its own, but is the negation of such a transcendental reality, and the impossibility of any statement on such an ultimately existing transcendental reality, it is no more than a fabrication of the mind. Emptiness is an ultimate truth, a fact which applies to all possible phenomena, in all possible worlds, but it is not an ultimate phenomenon or ultimate reality, something which has always existed, is self-created, and is self-sustaining. It is also not a Tao or a primal substance from which all other things arise. Buddhapalita. There is no way to overcome the misconceptions of those who think that emptiness is a real thing. For example, if you tell someone, I have nothing, and that person says, give me that nothing, how could you make that person understand that you have nothing? Susan Kahn further explains, Ultimate truth does not point to a transcendent reality, but to the transcendence of deception. It is critical to emphasize that the ultimate truth of emptiness is a negational truth. In looking for inherently existent phenomena it is revealed that it cannot be found. This absence is not findable because it is not an entity, just as a room without an elephant in it does not contain an elephantless substance. Even conventionally, elephantlessness does not exist. Ultimate truth or emptiness does not point to an essence or nature, however subtle, that everything is made of. Non-affirming negation A prominent and important feature of the Prasangika approach is their use of the non-affirming negation. A non-affirming negation is a negation which does not leave something in the place of what has been negated. 
For instance, when one says that a Buddhist should not drink alcohol, they are not affirming that a Buddhist should, in fact, drink something else. One is merely negating the consumption of alcohol under a particular circumstance. According to Tsongkhapa, for the Prasangika, the philosophical position of emptiness is itself a non affirming negation, since emptiness is a lack of inherent existence. One is not affirming anything in the place of that absence of inherence. It is not the presence of some other quality. If one were to describe emptiness as the presence of some quality, for example, a voidness or a thusness, it would linguistically and philosophically contradict the nature of the object which it is attempting to characterize. Topic. Rejection of the storehouse consciousness The dawning realization of emptiness can be frightening, arousing, fear of annihilation. Some Mahayana sutras therefore argue that the so-called storehouse consciousness or mind basis of all consciousness was taught by the Buddha provisionally, for the benefit of those who could be helped by believing in its existence but who would be harmed by hearing the teachings about emptiness." Tsongkhapa adheres to this provisional adherence of the storehouse consciousness, but rejects it as faulty once one has gained insight into emptiness. He presents the alternative viewpoint of the mere I, which carries karma from life to life and uses other techniques to overcome the fear of annihilation. Influence Topic. New tradition Sam Van Shaikh says that Tsongkhapa wanted to create something new, and that the early Gandenpas defined themselves by responding to accusations from the established schools. Though the Sakya had their own teachings on these subjects, Tsongkhapa was coming to realize that he wanted to create something new, not necessarily a school, but at least a new formulation of the Buddhist path. Topic. Monasticism and lineage Tsongkhapa emphasized a strong monastic Sangha. With the founding of the Ganden Monastery in 1409, he laid down the basis for what was later named the Gelug, virtuous ones. Order. At the time of the foundation of the Ganden Monastery, his followers became to be known as Gandanbas. Tsongkhapa himself never announced the establishment of a new monastic order. After Tsongkhapa had founded Ganden Monastery in 1409, it became his main seat. He had many students, among whom Gyaltsibja (1364–1431), Kedrup Gelik Pelzang, First Panchen Lama (1385–1438), Togden Jampal Gyatso, Jamyang Choj, Jamchenpa Sherup Senj, and the First Dalai Lama (1391–1474) were the most outstanding. After Tsongkhapa's passing, his teachings were held and kept by Gyaltsub Dharma Rinchen and Kedrub Gelik Palsang. From then on, his lineage has been held by the Ganden Tripas, the throne holders of Ganden Monastery, among whom the present one is Tubton Naima Lungtok Tenzin Norbu, the 102nd Ganden Tripa. After the founding of Ganden Monastery by Tsongkhapa, Drepung Monastery was founded by Jamyang Choj, Sara Monastery was founded by Choj Shakya Yeshe, and the first Dalai Lama founded Tashilhunpo Monastery. Many Gelug monasteries were built throughout Tibet but also in China and Mongolia. He spent some time as a hermit in Paibanka Hermitage, which was built during Songstan Gampo times, approximately 8 km northwest of Lhasa. Today, it is also part of Sara. Among the many lineage holders of the Gelugpas there are the successive incarnations of the Panchen Lama as well as the Chagkia Dorje Chong, Nakan Kanchak Gyaltsen, Kaisho Tulku Tenzin Thrinli, Jamyang Shepa, Furchak Jampa Rinpoche, Jamyang Du Dorje, Takfu Rinpoche, Kachin Yeshe Gyaltsen, Trijang Rinpoche, Domo Geshe Rinpoche, and many others. Topic. Prayer festival The annual Tibetan prayer festival Monlam Prayer Festival was established by Tsongkhapa. There he offered service to 10,000 monks. The establishment of the Great Prayer Festival is seen as one of his four great deeds. It celebrates the miraculous deeds of Gautama Buddha. Topic. Western understanding of Madhyamaka According to Karl Brunholzl, Tsongkhapa's Madhyamaka has become widely influential in the Western understanding of Madhyamaka. 
First, with a few exceptions, the majority of books or articles on Madhyamaka by Western, particularly North American, scholars is based on the explanations of the Gelugpa school of Tibetan Buddhism. Deliberately or not, many of these Western presentations give the impression that the Gelugpa system is more or less equivalent to Tibetan Buddhism as such and that this school's way of presenting Madhyamaka is the standard or even the only way to explain this system, which has led to the still widely prevailing assumption that this is actually the case. From the perspective of Indian and Tibetan Buddhism in general, nothing could be more wrong. In fact, the peculiar Gelugpa version of Madhyamaka is a minority position in Indo-Tibetan Buddhism, since its uncommon features are neither found in any Indian text nor accepted by any of the other Tibetan schools. Criticism <coughs> 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 Some of the greatest subsequent Tibetan scholars have become famous for their own works either defending or attacking Tsongkhapa's views. <laughs> <laughs> own inventions Tsongkhapa's rejection of Svatantrika has been criticized within the Tibetan tradition, qualifying it as Tsongkhapa's own invention, novelties that are not found in any Indian sources, and therefore, a major flaw, and unwarranted and unprecedented within the greater Madhyamaka tradition." According to Thupten Jinpa, the Gelugpa school sees Tsongkhapa's ideas as mystical revelations from the Bodhisattva Manjusri, whereas Garampa accused him of being inspired by a demon. Brunholzl further notes that, according to his Karma Kagyu Mahamudra critics, Tsongkhapa was mistaken in some regards in his understanding of emptiness, taking it as a real existent, and thereby hindering the liberation of his followers. According to Van Shaikh, these criticisms furthered the establishment of the Gelapga as an independent school. As Kedrup and later followers of Tsongkhapa hit back at accusations like these, they defined their own philosophical tradition, and this went a long way to drawing a line in the sand between the Gandenpas and the broader Sakya tradition. <laughs> Hornlike object of negation Karl Brunholzl notes that Tsongkhapa's object of negation, the phantom notion of real existence different from the table that is established through valid cognition, is called a horn-like object of negation. By his critics, Tsongkhapa first puts a horn on the head of the rabbit, and then removes it again, a maneuver which affects neither the rabbit's existence nor your taking the rabbit for a rabbit. According to Brunholzl, this is precisely why it is said that such an approach to the object of negation is not suitable for relinquishing the reifying clinging to persons and phenomena and thus does not lead to liberation from cyclic existence. Through negating the horn-like object of negation called real existence with regard to a table, we will neither relinquish the clinging to the reality of this table nor realize its ultimate nature. <laughs> Works Tsongkhapa promoted the study of logic, encouraged formal debates as part of Dharma studies, and instructed disciples in the Guyasamaha, Kalakakra, and Hevajra Tantras. Tsongkhapa's writings comprise 18 volumes, with the largest amount being on Guyasamaha Tantra. These 18 volumes contain hundreds of titles relating to all aspects of Buddhist teachings and clarify some of the most difficult topics of Sutrayana and Vajrayana teachings. Tsongkhapa's main treatises and commentaries on Madhyamaka are based on the tradition descended from Nagarjuna as elucidated by Buddhapalita and Khandrakirti. Topic: <laughs> Major works. Major works among them are The Great Treatise on the Stages of the Path to Enlightenment, Lam Rim Chen Mo. The Great Exposition of Secret Mantra, Snags Rim Chen Mo. Essence of True Eloquence, Drang Nges Legs B Shad Snying Po, Full Title, G Sung Rab Ki Drang Ba Dang Nges Pi Don R N A M Par Phi Ba G S A L Bar Bide Pa Legs Par B Shad Pi Snying Po. Ocean of Reasoning, A Great Commentary on Nagarjuna's Mulamadamakakarika, DBU Ma RTSA Bai T Shig Lower Bias Pa Shis Rab CES BYA Bai RNAM B Shad Riggs Pi RGYA MTSHO. Brilliant Illumination of the Lamp of the Five Stages, A Lamp to Illuminate the Five Stages, G Sang Deuce Rim LNGA GSALSGRON. 
Golden Garland of Eloquence GSER Frang, and The Praise of Relativity RTEN Brel BSTOD PA Topic English translations Biographer Life and Teachings of Tsongkhapa, Library of Tibetan Works and Archives, 2006, ISBN 978-81-86470-44-2 Lam Rim equals Great Treatise The Great Treatise on the Stages of the Path to Enlightenment, Volume 1, Snow Lion, ISBN 1-55939-152-9 the Great Treatise on the Stages of the Path to Enlightenment, Volume 2, Snow Lion, ISBN 1-55939-168-5 The Great Treatise on the Stages of the Path to Enlightenment, Volume 3, Snow Lion, ISBN 1-55939-166-9 Dependent Arising and Emptiness, a Tibetan Buddhist interpretation of Madhyamika philosophy, trans. Elizabeth Knapper, Wisdom Publications, ISBN 0-86171-364-8, this volume, "...considers the special insight section of the Lam Rim p. 8, Lam Rim, Medium Treatise The Medium Treatise on the Stages of the Path to Enlightenment, Calm Abiding Section translated in, "...balancing the mind, a Tibetan Buddhist approach to refining attention." Shambhala Publications, 2005, ISBN 978-1-55939-230-3 The Medium Treatise on the Stages of the Path to Enlightenment, Insight Section translated in Life and Teachings of Tsongkhapa. Library of Tibetan Works and Archives, 2006, ISBN 978-81-86470-44-2 the Medium Treatise on the Stages of the Path to Enlightenment Calm Abiding Section translated in B. Allen Wallace, Dissertation, 1995, Wiley, Byang Chub Lam Gi Rim Pa Chung Ba Lam Rim, Small Treatise Wallace, B. Allen 1995, The Cultivation of Sustained Voluntary Attention in Indo-Tibetan Buddhism, Small Exposition of the Stages of the Path to Enlightenment Golden Garland of Eloquence Golden Garland of Eloquence, Volume 1 of 4, First Abhisamaya, Jane Pub Co., 2008, ISBN 0-89581-865-5 Golden Garland of Eloquence, Volume 2 of 4, Second and Third Abhisamayas, Jane Pub Co., 2008, ISBN 0-89581-865-5 Six six three Golden Garland of Eloquence, Volume Three of Four, Fourth Abhisamaya, Jane Pub Co., 2010, ISBN 0-89581-867-1 Golden Garland of Eloquence, Volume Four of Four, Fourth Abhisamaya, Jane Pub Co., 2013, ISBN 978-0-89581-868-3 Madhyama Kaoshan of Reasoning, A Great Commentary on Nagarjuna's Mulamadamakakarika, Oxford University Press, ISBN 0 1951473322 Essence of True Eloquence translated in the Central Philosophy of Tibet Princeton University Press ISBN 0691020671 Guided Tour Through the Seven Books of Dharmakirti translated in A Millennium of Buddhist Logic Mudalal Barnasidas 1999 ISBN 8120816463 Tantrad Fulfillment of All Hopes Guru Devotion in Tibetan Buddhism Wisdom Publications ISBN ISBN 0-86171-153-X Tantric Ethics, An Explanation of the Precepts for Buddhist Vajrayana Practice, Wisdom Publications, ISBN 0-86171-290-0 The Great Exposition of Secret Mantra, Chapter 1 of 13, translated in Tantra in Tibet, Shambhala Publications, 1987, ISBN 978-0-937938-49-2 The Great Exposition of Secret Mantra, Chapter 2 and 3 of 13, translated in Deity Yoga, Shambhala Publications, 1987, ISBN 978-0-937938-50-8 The Great Exposition of Secret Mantra, Chapter 4 of 13, translated in Yoga Tantra, Shambhala Publications, 2012, ISBN 978-1-55939-898-5 The Great Exposition of Secret Mantra, Chapter 11 and 12 of 13, translated in Great Treatise on the Stages 
Languages of Mantra, Chapters 11-12 The Creation Stage, Columbia University Press, 2013, ISBN 978-1-935011-01-9 The Six Yogas of Naropa, Tsongkhapa's Commentary, Snow Lion Publications, ISBN 1-55939-234-7 Lamp of the Five Stages Brilliant Illumination of the Lamp of the Five Stages, Columbia University Press, 2011, ISBN 978-1-935011-00-2 A Lamp to Illuminate the Five Stages, Library of Tibetan Classics, 2013, ISBN 0-86171-454-7 Yoga Karyoshan of Eloquence, Song Kha Pa Commentary on the Yogacara Doctrine of Mind, State University of New York Press, ISBN 0-7914-1479-5 Other Splendor of an Autumn Moon, The Devotional Verse of Tsongkhapa Wisdom Publications, ISBN 978-0-86171-192-53 Principal Aspects of the Path, Tharpa Publications Stairway to Nirvana, A Study of the Twenty Samgas Based on the Works of Song Kha Pa, James B. Apple, State University of New York Press, 2008, ISBN 978-0-7914-7376-4 Topic. See also Galden Namchot Topic. Notes Subnotes Topic. References Topic. Sources Topic. Further reading Newland, Guy 2008, Introduction to Emptiness, as taught in Song Kha Pa Great Treatise on the Stages of the Path, Ithaca Thupten Jinpa 2013, Self, Reality and Reason in Tibetan Philosophy, Tsongkhapa's Quest for the Middle Way, Routledge Airy, Elijah 2015, Authorized Lives, Biography and the Early Formation of Gaelic Identity, Simon & Schuster Topic. External links Primary biography of Lama Tsongkhapa by Sanam Rinchen, Biography of Je Tsongkhapa by Kelsang Gyatso. Secondary Tsongkhapa, at the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy.